CubeView version 2809 has just been released and it has several new tools and features which will improve your workflow and give you a better understanding of the anatomy that was imaged. First off, if you go to the upper left corner, you'll see a new item here, online training. You must have internet access to use this feature. When you click on it, a link opens up to the Curbing Software Training webpage and you'll be able to view the different videos that we have prepared to teach you the basics on how to use CubeView software. Another new feature that's available for our customers using PAX and Workless in their uh, practice is an accession number search. You enter the exact accession number, press enter on the keyboard, and your list immediately narrows down to only those accession numbers that match what you entered. You can press reset to get back to your full list. If we have a scan that has metal present in it, often after we open it up, we can't seem to find the volume entry. What we see instead is a blank gray area, like what we see here. The new button that's added here, called Auto, selects a range approximately halfway through the density scale of what typically represents bone and soft tissue, and creates an image based on that. So whenever there's metal present in there now, the use of the Auto button will enable us to create a volume rendering much more quickly. Another new feature that's available in CubeView 2809 is the ability to change the viewing angle in the NPR windows without going through the 3D rendering. Simply go to the upper left corner, click on the XYZ Rotate button. Notice how the mouse has now changed shape. Left click, and as you drag, you've got some lines appear that will enable you to better line up your viewing angles with respect to particular pieces of anatomy of interest. When you let go, the other views line up. You can also get a more interactive experience by pressing the Shift key and you can see that the image rotates live when you let go, the other images catch up. Or you can also press the Control and Shift key and all of the images will rotate interactively at the same time. If you look in the lower right hand corner, you will see that the angle measurement changes as you rotate. In this case, Z equals 19, 20, 21, etc. This lets you know how much you are rotating. Also, when you rotate the 3D volume rendering, you also get the chance to see what the rotation is in the X, Y, and Z planes. When you're finished, if you want to reset to your original orientations, you can reset the NPR rotation, and that will only adjust the NPR views. The 3D orientation, again, as always, is reset by going to the AP view direction. New tools have also been added to better enable you to manipulate the 3D rendering. On the lower left-hand side, we're going to show the segmentation tools. Selecting freehand erase allows us to draw around a bone or part of a bone to remove it from view. We can continue to remove multiple parts of the bone to isolate a particular bone. We can also invert that segment, allowing us to see what was removed and switch it back again as well. And we can also reset the segmentation. Remove bone enables you to one-click on a particular bone and remove it from view. We can do this multiple times, removing multiple bones. And we can then better enable us to see the bones that have now been isolated and exposed. The tail is for an example here. You may also notice under the segmentation section, there's a tool called Create STL File. STL files are used to create actual solid objects using rapid prototype printing. To use the STL file creation, first of all, you need to understand that it exports the entire volume. Any segmenting you may have done using the freehand erase or remove bone tools will not carry through. The one adjustment that you can make is to adjust the STL HU threshold. Set a number roughly 2000 HUs that will approximate with the density of cortical bone. You can then export the file. You will, however, need a third party software to view the file and to make any modifications to it. By pressing on the I key and then left clicking on any image, we can then see where we are in 3D space by looking for the corresponding cursor marks on the other two images. We can also see that the 3D rendering is cutting away and we can see the projection of the red cursor marks on the volume where we are in 3D space. We've also had some requests to be able to save the entire volume 
of uh, images, not as DICOM, but as JPEG images. So if you go to save and save volume as JPEG, you then have the ability to save either the axial, the coronal, the sagittal, or all three series of images as JPEGs to review in a different type of software. Sometimes when we scan a patient, we find that the feet may not be correctly oriented to give us the correct viewing angle in our reformats or slices that are sent out to a PAX. So after we make the correction to bring everything back into the proper orientation, we can then save the volume as DICOM, select the plane we want, then when we select normalize data set rotation, what it will enable us to do is send out a new volume where this orientation with the toes pointing straight up is now the default orientation for this data set. There have been some modifications to some existing tools and features in CubeView to make it a little easier to work with. For example, if you've ever drawn a cob angle, you've probably wondered what's the best way to turn off that tool once I'm done making my measurement. Well, now you just have to simply hit the escape key and you can escape from using the cob angle tool. There's also been a modification to QView regarding the planes of rotation, the X, Y, and Z planes of rotation. The X plane still looks the same, where it looks like the toes are rotating up from the top. If we go to the Z rotation, however, it looks like the Y rotation used to. So please be aware of this change. And if we go to the Y rotation, we flip it up 90 degrees and then rotate around the true Y plane of rotation. Another new tool that's been added is the Volume of Interest tool. First of all, place your crosshairs in roughly the uh, area of anatomy that you wish to measure the density of. In this case, we're looking for the overall density of the bone in the calcaneus. Prior to this, our HU measurement tools or density measuring tools would only do it on a somewhat thin slice. Now we can draw a cube and that will enable us to measure the volume of whatever is inside that cube. So we can adjust the dimensions of the cube by clicking on the plus or minus X, Y, and Z signs. We can even uh, shrink. We can rotate to fit the particular uh, shape and orientation of the bone. And we can also reposition if necessary. This gives us, in a histogram scale, as well as the average uh, standard of deviation and mean values of the density of the bone inside the box that we have drawn. In closing, if you'd like to upgrade to QView version 2809, go to your upper left corner menu, select About, and you'll have the number available to contact Curbing Technical Support to schedule your upgrade. That is done by appointment only, so be sure to contact Curbing at 267-483-80. Eight one.